everyone, I'm Maddie Tadras, and today I'm going to be talking about emissions monitoring in Texas petrochemical plants. So as we know, Texas is a big area for emissions releasing, um, as there are many petrochemical plants in the area. Um, in 2000, the Texas Air Quality Study was conducted to gain more information on air quality across Texas, and this air quality study really found some information that was concerning and started a lot of movements toward having petrochemical plants monitor their emissions in more intense ways than they were previously doing. So the Texas Air Quality Study found that VOC emissions were actually 3 to 15 times higher than what they're estimated to be. And now I'm sure you're wondering what are VOCs? VOCs are volatile organic compounds. So these are compounds, organic compounds that contain carbon that easily evaporate at room temperature. So since they easily evaporate at room temperature, they're more likely to um, become incorporated into the air and form ozone and create pollution. So HRVOCs are highly reactive organic um, compounds. And these are really particular to Houston and to industrial emission areas. So these include light alkenes, which are propene, ethane, 1,3-butadiene, and different forms of butene. And these are often emitted in high industrial areas around Houston and just outside of Houston. And the reason Houston is such a big place for ozone formation is because these compounds that are specific to petrochemical plants also combine with coastal winds that we have since we're close to the coast, and they combine to form ozone. So as you can see here, areas of ozone formation around the Houston area, the darker blue means more ozone formation, and um, it has been found through the Texas Air Quality Study that high ozone formation is um, very specifically linked to industrial areas. And um, the Houston petrochemical plants specifically emit um, these emissions because of the types of chemicals being produced, um, the just in terms of oil refineries, um, HRVOCs are one of the main emissions that are released. So part of the 2000 um, air quality study was uh, one of the results was creating a plan that required all chemical plants to have effective emissions monitoring installed in 2006. So now we're going to take a look into specifically how emissions monitoring works. The most common type of emissions monitoring is gas chromatography. And in specifically within gas chromatography, the most common type of monitoring is mass spectrometry. And in mass spectrometry, the gas enters the device, which is the mass spectrometer, and blasts the molecules with electrons so that they become positively charged ions. And then these positively charged ions can pass through the filter in the mass spectrometer, and their mass and structure can then be determined. And by determining their mass and structure, the compounds can be identified, and we can see exactly which compounds are being released over certain amounts of times at different um, emission sites. Now, Environ was commissioned in 2006 by the Houston Advanced Research Center to go in and specifically look at how plants were doing with emissions monitoring and um, keeping up with the regulations that had been set for January of 2006. And Environ found that the most commonly used system in Texas petrochemical plants to monitor emissions was the Siemens Maxim 2 process gas chromatograph. And this chromatograph is, um, uses two main types of gas chromatography. Neither of which are mass spectrometry, though that can be used. The ga this gas chromatograph uses two specific types that are more relevant to organic compounds and highly reactive organic compounds. So the first method it uses is the flame ionization detector. The flame ionization detector first burns the sample of gas that is um, entered into it, and then ions are created through this combustion process. Then this creates a current of ions that goes through the chromatograph, and the molecules are broken up into fragments of specifically with 
the molecules are broken up like by carbon atoms, which is why it is so useful for organic compounds and HRBOCs. So then once these carbon atoms um, molecules are broken up and identified, we can identify the amount of HRBOCs that are released. The second method um, uh, that the, this gas chromatograph uses is elect an electron capture detector. Um, the electron capture detector is really important for highly electric neg electronegative elements. Um, they, it has two different electrons that emit radiation, um, usually in the form of nitrogen or hydrogen, and then the electrons um, that are released collide with the gas that enters. Um, they create ions, and as I said, it these type of ion this system detects highly electronegative elements, which is important for HRVOCs because highly electronegative elements include the halogens, which are present in HRVOCs. So, finally, um, Environ determined that after looking at nine different chemical plants in Texas, um, the monitors reduced emissions by about 17% of um, what was originally being reduced. Um, this is due to like prevent like when leaks occur, the um, plant more easily sees them, is notified of them, and can go in and fix them. Um, also, just in general, seeing how much emissions is being released creates a push to see, oh, maybe we are going over the limit a little bit in this way, we need to reduce our emissions. Um, and so while these monitors did seem to be working, um, it has been yet to be able to figure it out whether they're e economically beneficial. Um, still today, the monitors have reduced amounts of emissions um, to about 30%, um, I believe, but um, it's still not proven to be entirely economically beneficial for the companies. Um, and that is all I have. Um, thank you so much, and now I will open the floor to questions. Student questions this time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, like, uh, I guess with the physical manifestation on the plant of some of these, uh, the gas chromatography, it's like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, um, they are usually just, they're like put all over the plant in areas where um, the tunnel of gas is on track to be. Um, like emitted from the system, so it's just like in any sort of like um, contain not container like tunnel that is like on the way to emissions. There will be like multiple gas chromatographs like um, placed in the area, so they receive um, data of emissions at like different places along the um, path to emission. Also, there are some placed just in like all over to try to detect leaks and things like that. Most of these measure or try to reduce VOCs and HRVOCs. Mm -hmm. Remind the class why do we care about those compounds? Yeah, so um, HRVOCs, since they're highly reactive, um, they're very quick to form ozone. So uh, reducing their emissions and knowing about their emissions is important in decreasing pollution and <coughs> ozone because, um, as I said before, the coastal winds of Houston, the combine with the HRVOCs that are um, released in the air. And part of another thing about HRVOCs is that um, they, are, they evaporate at room temperature. So they're already incorporated into the air. They're very reactive. And then along with um, all the breezes that are around, they form ozone very quickly. Thank you. I'll try to plug in. Okay. Okay.